Hello everyone in the chess world, today I'm going to show you what to play against the bird opening, which is uh, f4, one f4. And well, I am going to recommend a d5. So th this is kind of cool for me because if you saw my other video on some refuted openings, I show you that against the grub, you could play d5. And also against the, the Polish before, you know, you can play also d5. So in a way, I, you know, when I some time ago when I prepared this F4 D5 line with some specific ideas that I will show you right now, I, it was funny for me. Like I'm, I will, I'm not a player that against D4 will play D5, but I, to me it was like something easy to remember. You know, against any like bizarre initial move by White, I can play uh, this D5. However, before showing you everything that I want to show you in this D5 line. Yeah, I want to, you know, approach like the, the elephant in the room. So a lot of you are probably thinking, hey, what about the from gambit? So you want my opinion on the from gambit? I love it. I would love to be, have black and, you know, go into the main line. F takes e5, d6, pawn takes, bishop takes, knight, G, uh, knight f3, g5. I love this position for black. But as I said, I mentioned in another video, I'll leave you a link for that. But the, the thing is, after f4 and e5, I mean, white could play e4, and as I said, as I always say, you know, be careful with transpositions. Now it's a king's gambit, and I'm black. Hey, if white is playing this, they probably know some theory. I I don't know absolutely anything about the the king's gambit with either color, even less with black. This is one of the reasons why I don't play. Almost never played the front gambit. Okay, I'll I'll tell you the truth. I, the truth. I have played sometimes this, and in the few games in which they transpose into the king's gambit, <laughs> I played this. Um, well, this is six move. I mean, I, I know this is not the right move. It's the way to be safe against the king's gambit and not having to worry about the theory. Okay, of course, yeah, we're in white. Uh, I've, I've allowed white to play the forbidden F4 move instead of, yeah, going for the correct E takes F4. Okay, he was just aiming for the front gambit. But, okay, I will show you how in this D5, well, one of the main ideas is I still want to play, I'm going to play in, in such a way that I want to play E5 one day and having both central pawn breaks uh, played, you know, D5 and E5. So for that, first of all, I want to show you the, the model game, which will be Romanishing with the um, Romanishing with the white pieces, Gary Kasparov with the black pieces. Gary follow everything that I like about this line. So let us see that because the game followed uh, knight on F3, knight on F6, E3, and bishop on g4. So, Romanishin played b3. I mean, this is quite typical. You know, they're gonna just fianchero that bishop. And if you look at this, you'll say, okay, uh, you know, I said that someday I want to play e5 with black, which is what Kasparov did on this game. Of course, pinning this knight on f3 is, well, one of the first steps for that. We're ready to blow the knight, at, you know, blow out the knight. There won't be any more control of the e5 uh, square for that night. But well, considering that uh, this uh, h3, will, we're going to see it later. <laughs> b3, well, they're going to place a bishop in here and try to control the e5 square anyway. So let us see what Kasparov does. First knight bd7, again, development, looking at the e5 square. Bishop on b2, the same. <laughs> c6. You're thinking, well, why are we making a move? Why is Kasparov making a move that doesn't have seem to have anything to do with e5? Well, it does have a lot to do with e5. So we're solidifying the d5 pawn, but Kasparov is going to place the queen on c7. This is going to be a very important thing to try and play the e5 uh, pawn break anyway. So the game follow bishop on e2, uh, queen c7, voila. There you go. So after Castles, look at this. Kasparov doesn't wait anymore. He, Kasparov is not even waiting for Romanishin to play h3 or something. He just blows up the knight and plays e5. And the other thing with all of these development moves that we, we made, the other thing that I really love about this, Kasparov is going to castle long. Kasparov is going to go for the attack. So it's kind of really curious, right? Like um, White played this f4. So they advance one of the pawns that is the shield for the short castles well Kasparov is attacking that with e5 and going for long castles so the game follows d3 bishop on d6 more 
uh, strength into the e5 square, into the dark squares for, for black. g3 trying to be as solid as possible, long castles, the typical aggressive Gary. So c4, finally, Romanishin goes for some activity on the other side, and Gary takes that pawn. He doesn't wait around. So B takes e4, and what is Gary going to play here? Well, it's h5 and h4. Again, really aggressive. Queen c2, h4, you know. Romanishin goes knight c3, h takes g3. Now opening up the h file, not waiting <laughs> for a second. I love this way of, of playing by, by Gary. H takes, bishop c5, exclaim. So now he's going the other way. I mean, that e3 pawn is tender, and obviously this diagonal, you know, with the king and this e3 pawn, they're both tender. 91 correct defense by Romanishin. Um, queen on f2 would have been already a mistake. Look at this, after e takes f4 and g takes f4. I mean, everyone was saying that at g5 winning, <laughs> you know, g5 is already too much attack. You know, of course, if f takes g5, we're just going to play um, rook dg8. I mean... It's 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 like Gasparo only made almost uh, only aggressive moves and hey, you could be lost. That that is why knight d1 was uh, a better move by Romanishin, but he takes a four. G4, this is good. Okay, well played by, by Romanishin. Otherwise, you know, if we play g takes a uh, four right now, well g5 anyway. <laughs> Again, so d4 is correct, but Gasparo went back. And after e takes f4, once again g5. So, okay, Kasparov ended up winning this game uh, really coolly. I think, uh, I don't remember what Romanishin played this. I do have the analysis they made of why f takes g5 was bad. Because the detail is, okay, you might think, hey, queen takes g3 check. It should be already a justification for not to play f takes g5. Well, not so much because after queen on g2, of course, we will go back with our queen, you know, to d6 or c7, let us say, I don't know, queen c7. At least white is kind of holding. It's good to know that much better again to play rook dg8. This would have been much better. So let us say bishop on c1 to protect the g5 pawn. Well, now we take it, and after queen g2, we go back. But we already have this rook on, on g8. This is this, I'm showing you this just to illustrate that the most precise way to keep attacking this king, you know, in this uh, kind of line. So, for example, bishop on e3 and knight on h7. And now I, well, there's not much more to show. Uh, g5 is falling. The king and the queen, uh, white's king and queen, both on the g file with a rook there. I mean, this. There's not much more to see. So, okay, this was like the model game. The, 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 the main idea. I like to show this this kind of stuff because I start with bit f4 on d5. So, I think you should all do this. Like, whenever you choose any opening, you know, an opening line against anything, you should have in mind, you know, if someone were to come to you and tell you, okay, what will be the theoretical line that you will rather your opponent play in. It's good to have that model game, like saying, okay, if I had the choice, you know, if I could choose, I will tell them, okay, play this. Yeah, because this is where you have your model game and stuff. Now, I want to, this time, I want to, you know, be precise and show you like all the lines, everything that can be played here. So for example, I show you this position. So one, automatic uh, question that will come into to your minds when I tell you, hey, I want to take on f3, I want to play c6, queen c7, and play on e5. Well, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking about, um, about like, hey, what about d4? J just, you know, preventing e5 forever. Of course, I had to check this. This is very interesting. So, yes, on the one hand, again, white is compromising. They're playing d4. It's a solid move. They're forever preventing e5 but now that pawn cannot can cannot ever go back so now i have another another model game in here which will be uh, this is a uh, wilson with the white pieces and allman with the black pieces and allman is going to win really quickly it's it's okay there are some mistakes by uh, by wilson but look at this so e6 and after bishop on e2 c5 I mean, as a general opening idea you should know this yes they've effectively prevented e5 let us make normal chess move and go for the c5 break. I c3. Again, this is why, again, this is my model game, you know. The first model game is a very super aggressive one in which I show you Kasparov going, lashing now, breaking everything. Well, what happens if now 
our second model game will be the solidest possible thing for white if they they're so you know like this bitter players going like you know anything before an attack for you okay you we still have um, a lot of really useful stuff to to play so look at this again this i like this is similar as in, in the kasparov game uh allman doesn't even wait for any h3 to blow up that night he just blows it up and plays knight on c6 i mean of course one of the ideas is maybe white will be willing to play knight on e5 otherwise so there is also a, a an understandable reason and now knight on c6 so castles bishop on e7 just normal chess development in chess queen c2 was already considered a little bit um uh, dubious because allman play rook on c8 just putting the rook there but okay wilson play queen on f2 like saying okay i still i wanted to place my queen on f2 I still had to do it in two tempos, even from this position. So, yeah, play <laughs> rook c8 shouldn't be, and it's not really an advantage for black. So, um, Allman castle, and we saw knight e2, b5 now. I mean, why not? Um, just the expansion on the queen side, and there are no drawbacks for for this move. For example, I don't know if White were to try to take advantage of uh, that by playing a4. Well, of course, that only accelerates our action on the queen side so hey b5 why not uh actually in fact um yeah wilson took on c5 and after bishop takes on c5 he played knight on b3 so yeah white doesn't have the most solid pawn on d4 anymore but he plays an, a knight on d4 it's still a decent position for 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 white but again all man play normal moves now he develops the queen queen on b6 and after bishop on d2 just b4 so yeah nothing to do with the other game but it's still pretty quick action by black in this case on the queen side so the game followed c takes b4 knight takes d4 e takes d4 and rook on c2 so before recapturing the pawn on before allman of course takes advantage of, of this uh well attacking on through through the seventh rank and with the pin you know over the, the bishop that now will not be able to move for for the moment Queen e3 I'm pinning by Wilson, but um now, yes, Bishop takes on b4. So Allman plays the logical sequence, including the rook on c2. And Bishop c3 followed, but the, this was a mistake because after Bishop takes and pawn takes, well now who's gonna protect c3? Now there, there is no way. In fact, Wilson played uh here, but of course the intermediate move rook takes pawn, so now it's, it's an extra pawn for Allman. Yes, there is rook takes c2, and we can, we cannot take the queen because, of course, there is this check followed by mate. And this was the, the game, but of course, I mean, just <laughs> all man just play rook takes on c2, and again, again he's <laughs> all the activity, an extra pawn. And look, at it's really nice the way how he actually wrapped things up here, because look, queen e5, again, a mistake by white, but knight g4, <laughs> that it's not an easy move to see knight g4 look at this and the more all of us would have played queen on b2 you know we're attacking the rook and we're trying to get into the uh seventh rank but at least after rook on d1 yeah i'm sure black is winning but well at, at least you know trying to survive for a little bit uh, white but uh, after uh, this knight on g4 this is terrible because now okay bishop takes g4 is the only move and, and now white white is not protecting uh, the g2 square anymore um if queen e1 of course we have queen takes the uh, allman had queen takes d4 check okay king f1 knight takes f2 mate or i don't know king h1 i mean all obviously we have this check i mean is everything is all over no matter from which point of view you see it so in the game after bishop takes on g4 uh queen b2 came and now there's nothing to do you know threatening in the rook threatening to take on g2 check followed by mate uh the game saw this move i mean of course if bishop on f3 i mean we just take this <laughs> uh and after rook takes on e2 okay yeah but of course white resign then we will take the the rook we made but again almost a miniature by allman and okay there were a lot of mistakes by white but remember we just came from this the most solid possible line for white now i don't want to finish the video without showing you because in here so far, we've seen the um, Kasparov game, you know, Romanishin against Kasparov B3, and then Wilson against Allman with this D4. But uh, basically, the main line is H3. 
And there are different ways to, to play here for black. I have um, um, a favorite one that I want to show you. What I like is, of, of course, first of all, taking the knight, queen takes on f3. And now I think uh, the main moves are like c5 or e6, the most logical ones. I really rather knight on c6. And it's funny because now I saw like four moves for white, four different moves. Um, I saw g4, one of the ideas of white playing h3, bishop takes, queen on f3, expansion on, on, on the king side. I saw also bishop b5, just going and playing against that this knight. I mean, you have to consider that when, once we play knight on c6, let us say that white plays an innocent move. I don't know. I mean, our idea is again, once again e5. If white plays, I don't know, a3. We're just going to lash out for a5. So besides g4 or this uh, bishop on b5, I've seen also knight on c3, normal move. And even, well, once again, d4, just preventing e5. So these lines are much, much shorter. But I just want to show you a few lines. For example, g4. Once again, whenever white doesn't prevent e5, we're going to make that move. And after g5, we could play e4 here, but I like knight on e4, just simply like that, playing like that. Uh, and if d3 or go to c5. Again, I'm sure this position is unclear or equal. I already like uh, black much better. Um, what else do we have? Well, bishop on b5. I like queen d7. I like just queen d7. Okay, yeah, also maybe we, I want, want to, you know, play long castles any five as on the initial really initial really aggressive game uh, by Kasparov. But maybe I just want to play a6 and be able to recapture with the queen on c6, right? So for example, knight c3, a6. Uh, if they capture, I capture with the queen and b3. Well, knight on e4. You know, just using that strength that, that I have on the on the e4 square. Uh, bishop on b2 normal, now just development with e6, and let us say, I mean, I like, uh, okay, short castles, uh, now you blunder on d2, <laughs> so, and after long castles, I like to imitate in, in this position, uh, yeah, that long castles, long castles, let us say knight on e2, just king b8, um, this position is more like equal, and it's not so aggressive, once again, I feel really well, really fine with, with black. I, 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 I prefer black a little bit, even in this position. Going back again to this position, uh, I also offer a knight on c3. Once again, white doesn't prevent e5, so we go e5. Now on g4, well, now we have d4. And let us say g5, I think we should just exchange. And here just queen takes on f6, you know, simple, normal chess. Um, B takes E3, taking, you know, recapturing the pawn towards the center. If D takes C, I think once again we should play long castles. I once again like black uh, much better. And for example, B takes C, I don't remember if this was a, a real game, but exchanging everything and bishop on D6 is, is kind of cool. Um, if rook B1 first, you know, like saying if you take on F4, I'll take on B7. Well, once again, long castles. And after d4, allowing uh, the dark square, white's dark square bishop to protect the pawn, we'll just knight on e7. Now we start to play more positional and going for the squares, right? But mainly this square. And then looking at some, I mean, yeah, again, this position should be unclear. Once again, I will have to say that I rather black in here. Finally, in this position, uh, d4. The most solid move and making sure e5 doesn't happen. We're gonna do similar. Uh, you'll see how the ideas are all similar. We're gonna do similar as in um, the Allman game, just e6. Yes, we do have an knight on c6 here, so we blocked the c5 pawn. I don't, I don't see any problem. For example, here knight b4, we even have just hitting that, that this double check on, on c2. And if, if, if queen on f2 here, this is the thing. Well, now we justify the knight on b4. We just throw the c pawn after a3. Now we go back having the c5 pawn uh, break um, already over the board. Or uh, bishop on b5 check and c6 bishop on a4. This is a probably correct way of protecting the c2 point for, for white and not allow c5. a5 is a good move. And look at this because there are some... 
unforeseen, and I was going to say unexpected, but really unforeseen tactics. A3, Bishop E7 exclaim. I mean, this is so funny. When I remember making this, this little study for this line. It's so funny. Um, okay, and now I will simply have to go for something like, okay, we, we want to play B5. So why we'll have to go Bishop B3. Now we go back to A6. Castles, castles with pretty cool position. Now we're ready to, not right away probably, or actually we could, but we can play C5 uh, later on. And the thing is, of course, I'm not... It's not, I'm not forgetting what will happen after A takes B4. Well, the thing is, after A takes B4, White cannot do anything against the B5 idea recovering the piece with this hanging rook on E1. It's really an unexpected tactics. So here, for example, it, well, of course, we're also threatening the knight on C3. So let us say that the knight goes away. Well, B5, bishop takes B5. Let us take that. Even giving another pawn and, uh, and allowing allowing White to to break our, our possibility of castling. Uh, okay, we, as I'm pointing out with the arrow, Queen B6 is a threat now. So Bishop B5 is the only move. White has to be um, able to come back to D3 and manage to to, to make that Bishop escape. You know, uh, just G6 on castles Knight on E4. With the totally active rook on a1, the material, I mean, this even this is winning for black. Or going back, um, we were in this position, we were saying a takes, a takes. Okay, uh, bishop takes e6, check immediately. Well, just pawn takes, they'll exchange, and we're still hitting the knight. So knight on e2, g6. Same idea as castles, castles. Okay, this is not winning, but this is a clear advantage for us. I mean... Really, everything looks looks great. So, okay, just to sum it up a little bit, we are, have well, from this position we saw first of all the B three, you know, Ramanishin against Kasparo, the super aggressive idea of playing C six, Knight B D seven, Queen C seven, and E five. Then we saw a little bit more, you know, the most solid possible D four, like this Wilson against um, Allman. Even playing c3 and pretty quick uh, victory for Allman. And finally, what actually is the main line h3, it makes a lot of sense for, for white to ask us right away what to do with that bishop. Of course, we blow it up. And again, if you guys like to play c c5 in here or if e6, it's fine. I really like this nice c6 insisting with the idea of only five. And I think, again, once again, making it a little easier to learn everything by heart, right? Because the ideas are similar. So, well, I really hope you like this video. Uh, I really like this line, really, because I must must tell you, you know, for example, uh, against f4, it's really normal for me to play my usual modern King's Indian. I really love this still. Yeah, I think that the other option is... is I think it's usually it's psychologically more difficult and I really love the positions that, that, that are arising in general against that. So I'll leave my cat citronetta as usual to ask you to like, comment, share and subscribe. And thanks a lot for watching the video. I will see you the next time.